premeditated homicide. That's the most serious charge tried in our criminal courts. You have heard a long and complex case. Now, gentlemen, it's your duty to sit down and try to separate the facts from the fancy. One man is dead. The life of another is at stake. If there is a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilt of the accused, then you must declare him not guilty. If, however, there is no reasonable doubt, then he must be declared guilty. Whichever way you decide, the verdict must be unanimous. I urge you to deliberate honestly and thoughtfully. You're faced with a grave responsibility. Thank you, gentlemen. The jury will retire. stand a chance. Did you ever hear a phony story? Hey, look, you gotta respect that. You know what you're doing. 
dealing with. He bought the switch knife that night. And then he lost it. A hole in his pocket. A hole in his father. What a terrible way to kill your father. A knife in the chest. I mean, look, you, look at the kind of people they are. You know what you're dealing with. <coughs> What's the matter? You got a cold? Oh, Lulu. He's not with a cold to kill you. Yeah, I had one last year while I was on vacation, too. All right, gentlemen, let's take seats. All right, this better go fast. I got tickets to see Hamilton tonight. All right? I'm the last guy on earth to see it. So, Your Honor, let's get this show started. How about sitting down? The gentleman by the window. How about sitting down? I'm sorry. So look, it's hard to figure, isn't it? I mean, a kid kills his father. Bing! Just like that. Well, it's the elements. They let their kids run wild. Maybe it serves them right. There are better proofs than some emotion you may have. Or perhaps some dislike for some group. Now, we all agreed that it was hot. And tempers would get short. That's if we disagree. This is open and shut. Let's get it done. All right, you gentlemen can handle this any way you want to. I'm not going to make any rules. If we want to discuss it first and then vote, that's one way. And we can vote right now and see how we stand. Hey, let's vote right now. Who knows, maybe we can all go home. Yeah, let's see how work. All right, let's vote now. All right, let's vote. Anybody doesn't want to vote? No. Uh, I'm good. All right, those. All those voting guilty, raise your hand. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's eleven not guilty. Okay, not guilty. Hey, you're in left field. That's eleven to one. Eleven guilty, one not guilty. Now we know where we stand. Do you really believe he's not guilty? I don't know. Six days, he doesn't know. In six days, I can learn calculus. This is A, B, C. I don't believe it is as simple as A, B, C. I never saw a guiltier man in my life. Now, what does a guilty man look like? He's not guilty until we say he's guilty. Are we the vote on his face? You sat right in court and heard the same things I did. The man's a dangerous killer. You could see it. Where do you look to see if a man's a killer? Oh, well, no, I want to know. Tell me what the facial characteristics of a killer are. Maybe you know something I don't know. Look, just what is it about this case that makes you think the boy is innocent? He's 19 years old. That's old enough. He knifed his own father four inches in the chest. An innocent little 19-year-old kid. <laughs> Look, I agree with you the boy is guilty, but I think we should try to avoid emotionally colored arguments. All right. They proved it a dozen different ways. Do you want me to list them? No. Uh, do you believe that stupid story? You now, told? now. Hey, uh, do you believe the kid's story? I don't know whether I believe it or not. Maybe I don't. So what did you vote not guilty for? Yeah. There were 11 votes for guilty. It's not easy for me to raise my hand and send some boy off to die without us first talking about it. Who says it was easy for me? Or yeah, for me. You know what? He's still just as guilty whether it's an easy vote or a hard vote. Is there something wrong because I voted fast? Not necessarily. I say the guy's guilty. We could talk for a hundred years, you wouldn't change my mind. I don't want to change your mind. Just what are you thinking of? I just want to talk for a bit. Okay, look, this kid's been kicked around all his life. You know, living in a slum. His mother dead since he was nine. That's not a very good head start. He's a tough, angry kid. Well, you know why slum kids get that way? Because we knock them on the head once a day, every day. I just think we owe the kid a few words. That's all. All right, look, it's tough. All right, sure. It was tough for me. I got everything I fought for. I worked my way through college, and well, yes, that was a long time ago, and 
Perhaps we do forget. I fought, yes, but I never killed. Uh, I know what it's like. I never killed nobody. I've been kicked around too. Wait until you work in an ad agency and the big boy that buys the advertising office in. We all know. In my country, in Europe, kicking was a science. But let's try to find something better than hey, that. Hey, I don't mind telling this, mister. We don't owe that kid a thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? Yeah. Hey, do you know what that trial cost? He's lucky he got it. Look, we're all grown-ups here. You're not gonna tell us that we're supposed to believe him, knowing what he is. Hey, I've lived among them my whole life. You can't believe a word they say. You know that. What? What a terrible thing for a man to say. I don't believe that. You listen to me. When did the word get? When did the word work? Oh, oh, oh. Okay, wait for a moment. I have something to say. I want you to tell me this. When did the word dishonesty cross into our vocabulary in a group characteristic? You don't have the, no, you don't have the monopoly for the truth. All right, it's not Sunday. We don't need a sermon. Well, I don't see the need for all this arguing. I think we ought to behave like gentlemen. Right. One more thing. This man is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> if you insist, we will behave like gentlemen. Thank you. Sure. Now, if we're going to discuss the case, then let's discuss the facts. I think that's a good point. We've got a job to do. Let's do it. If, if you gentlemen don't mind, I am going to close the window. Oh, oh, no. oh, it was growing on my mind. I'd like the window open if you don't mind. Well, it was growing on me. Don't you want some air? It's summer. It's hot. I was very uncomfortable. There's 12 guys in here. That's the only window, if you don't mind. I have some rights, too. Yeah, so does everybody else in here. Couldn't you just trade chairs with someone on the other end of the table, please? All right. I will open the window if uh, someone will trade. Thank you. Gladly. Oh, Gladly. Thank you. Thank you. Shall we get back to the case? Yeah, let's. I may have an idea here. Now, I'm just speaking out loud, but it seems to me that it's up to us to convince this gentleman that we're right and he's wrong. Maybe if we each talk for a minute or two. You know, go around the table, they are kind of oversized. That sounds fair enough. Very fair. Suppose we go once around the table. All right, let's get it started. Right. We'll start with you. Uh, all right, well. I just thought he was guilty. Yeah. I, I thought that was obvious. And in what way was it obvious? Well, nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. It's innocent until proven guilty. The burden of proof's on the prosecution. The defendant doesn't even have to open his mouth. It's in the Constitution, the Fifth Amendment. You've heard of it. Everyone has. Of course I've heard of it. I know what it is. But, I mean, I just thought he was guilty. That's all. No reasons, just guilty? There is a life at stake here. Okay, let's get to the facts. Number one, let's take the old man who lived on the second floor right underneath the room where the murder took place. At 10 minutes after 12 on the night of the killing, you hear loud noises coming from the upstairs apartment. He said it sounded like a fight. Then he heard the kid say, I'm going to kill you. Then he heard a body falling, and he ran to the door of his apartment, looked out, and saw the kid running downstairs and out of the house. But then he called the police. They found the father with a knife in his chest. And the coroner fixed the time of death around midnight. Right, now what else do you want? Something doesn't fit. All right, the boy's story is flimsy. 
He claimed he was at the movies that night. Now that's a little ridiculous, isn't it? He couldn't even remember what picture he saw. Right. <laughs> what do you say about that? You're absolutely right. And he didn't have any ticket stubs at all. Well, who keeps ticket stubs from the movies? All right, well, that's true enough. <laughs> I suppose. But the cash didn't remember. And the ticket taker didn't either. Uh, what about the lady across the street? If her testimony don't prove it, then nothing does. That's right. She yeah. saw the killing too, didn't she? Let's go in order. Hey, just a minute. Here's a woman who's lying in bed, and she can't sleep. You know, it's hot, you know? Anyway, she gets up, and she looks out the window, and right across the street, she sees the kid stick a knife into his father. How can she really be sure it was the kid when she saw it through the windows of a passing elevated train? She's known the kid his whole life. His window is directly opposite hers. And, and she swore in court that, that she saw him do it. She swore. I heard her swear to it. Okay. And they proved in court that you can look through the windows of a passing L train at night and see what's happening on the other side. They proved it. Weren't you just telling us a minute or two ago that you can't trust them? That you can't believe them? So? Then I want to ask you something. How come you believe her? She's one of them too, isn't she? Hey, you're a pretty smart Look through the windows of a passing L train, didn't they? Yes, they did. Okay. And couldn't you see everything that was happening on the other side? I did not see as well as they told me I would see, uh, but I did see what happened on the other side. Hey, hey you see? Yeah. Do you see? Let's calm down. It's your turn. I'll pass this. That's your privilege. What about you? I don't know. I was starting to be convinced. You know, uh, with the testimony from those people across the hall, didn't they say that the father <laughs> and the son had an argument that night uh, around 7 o'clock? I mean, that could be yeah. wrong. No, I, I think it was 8 o'clock, not 7. Right, 8 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, my father, the, they heard the father hit the boy twice, and then they saw the boy walk angrily out of the house. Right. Now, what does that prove? <coughs> well, it doesn't prove anything. It's part of the picture. I didn't say it proved anything. Is there anything else? No. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know. I think most of it has already been said. And we can talk about this thing all day long, but I think we are wasting our time. I don't. Neither do I. Go ahead. All right, let's look at the record. The kid stole a car. He was arrested for mugging. I think, I think they said he stabbed somebody in the arm. Yes, okay. they did. Okay, he got picked up for knife fighting. At 15, he was sent to reform school. And they sent him to reform school for stabbing someone. Now this is a very fine boy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, ever since he was five years old, his father beat him up regularly. And he used his fist. So, so would I on a kid like that. You're right, it's the kids. I mean, the way they are, you know. Well, they don't listen. I got a kid. When he was eight years old, he ran away from a fight. I saw him. I was so ashamed. I told him right out, I'm going to make a man out of you or I'm going to bust you up into little pieces trying. When he was 15, he hit me in the face. He's a big kid, you know. I haven't seen him in three years, rotten kid. I hate tough kids. You work your heart out of them. All right, let's get on. Gentlemen, we're missing the point here. Let's say this kid comes from a filthy neighborhood and a broken home. We can't help that. We're not here to discuss the reasons why slums are breeding grounds for criminals. They are. I know it, 
and so do you. The children who come from slum backgrounds are potential menaces to society. You said it there, believe me. I don't want to have nothing to do with them. I've lived in a slum all my life. Hey, hey, take it I easy. I used to play in the backyard that was filled with dogs. Maybe it still smells on me. Now let's be reasonable. There's nothing personal. There's nothing personal. Come on now. He didn't mean you both. Well, who did he mean that? Let's not be so sensitive. Well, I can understand the sensitivity. Let's stop bickering. What are wasting time. It's your turn. All right. I had a peculiar feeling about this trial from the very beginning. Somehow I felt the defense counsel never conducted a, a thorough cross-examination. Too many questions were left unasked. While it doesn't change my opinion about the guilt of the boy still, I agree with you that the defense counsel was bad. So? This is the point. What about facts? So many questions were never answered. What about the questions that were answered? Like? For instance, let's talk about that cute little switchblade. Yeah. You know, the one that fine, upright kid admitted buying. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it back in here and take another look at it. Mr. Foreman, I want to see the knife again. We all know what it looks like. I don't see why we have to look at it again. What do you think? Well, a gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Mm -hmm. Head with me. Now, this knife is a pretty strong piece of evidence, <coughs> don't you agree? Yes, I do. Then let's get the sequence of events right as they relate to the switchblade knife. The boy admits going out of his house at 8 o'clock after being slapped by his father. Or punched. Or punched. Or punched. He goes down to the neighborhood store and buys a switchblade knife. Now, the storekeeper who sold it to him was arrested the next day for selling it to him. I think we all agree it's, a new, it's an unusual knife. Uh, pretty hard to forget something like that. The storekeeper identified the knife and said it was the only one of its kind that he had in stock, that he never saw one like it. Now, why did the boy get it? As a present for a friend of his, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right so far? Right. You bet he's right. Now, I want you to listen to this man. He knows what he's talking about. Next, the boy goes <coughs> down the boy comes home and says on the way home that the knife fell out of a hole in his coat pocket, that he never saw it again. Now there's a story, gentlemen. You know what really happened. The boy took the knife home and stabbed his father with it and even remembered to wipe away the fingerprints. Everyone connected with the case has identified this knife. Now, are you trying to get us to believe that someone found the knife, took it to the boy's home, and stabbed the boy's father with it just to be amusing? No. I'm saying it's possible the boy lost the knife, and that someone else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very strange knife. I've never seen one like it before in my life, and neither have the storekeeper who sold it to him. Mm -hmm. Aren't you trying to make us accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm not trying to make anyone accept it. I'm just saying it's possible. And I'm saying it's not possible. Hey! Let's get quiet! It's the same knife. Where did you get that? I got it at a little junk shop around the corner from the boy's house. Cost two dollars. Now you listen to me. I'm listening. You pulled a real smart trick here, but you proved absolutely zero. Maybe there are ten knives like that. So what? And maybe there are. The boy lied and you know it. And maybe he didn't lie. Maybe he did lose a knife. And maybe he did go to the movies. Maybe the reason the cashier didn't see him is because he sneaked into the movies. And maybe he was too ashamed to say so. Is there anyone here that did sneak into the movies once or twice when you were young? Uh, no, I didn't. Not even once? No. We didn't have movies. Oh. Uh. <laughs> maybe he went to the movies, maybe he did. And he may have lied. Do you think he lied? Now that's a stupid question. <laughs> of course he lied! Do you? You don't have to ask me that. You know my answer. He lied. 
do you think he lied? I don't know. Now wait just a second. What are you, the kid's lawyer? Now there's still 11 guys in here who think he's guilty. You're alone. Now I don't know what you're trying to accomplish, but if you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, he'll be tried again and found guilty sure as he was born. You're probably right. So what are you going to do about it? We can be here all night. It's only for one night, for God's sake. <laughs> a man could get killed. Now, come on. Uh, yes, that is true. I think we ought to get on with it now. Right, let's get going here. Hey, how do you like this guy? Well, what do you say? You're the one holding up the show. <clears throat> Obviously, you don't think the boy is guilty. I have a doubt in my mind. But you haven't really presented anything to us that makes it possible for us to understand your doubt. I mean, there's the old man downstairs. He heard it. He heard the kid shriek it out. The woman across the L tracks, she saw it. We know he bought the switch knife that night. We don't know where he really was. At the movies? Earlier that night, the kid and his father did have a fight. Now, the kid's been violent the whole way, and while that doesn't prove Still, anything, you know. Hey, I got a proposition for you. I want to call for a vote. I want you 11 men to vote by secret written ballot. Yeah. And, and I'll abstain. If there's still 11 votes for guilty, then I won't stand alone. We'll take in a guilty verdict right now. That sounds fair. Does everyone agree? Let's do it. Let's roll it. Let's roll it. to know. 